Are we doing? Hello. Good. Nice to see you. Good morning, guys. Yeah, so you're here in my house. And it's kind of like, it's a working house. It's a normal house. So like literally, I'll uh, close this up. You, have, you can hear the green keeper out there. Yeah. You can just, and we'll pop outside and maybe have a talk with him later. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, when you say normal house, is it a normal house for somebody who has you know, won major golf championships, not a normal house? Yeah, but as I said, it, it's still a functioning house. Like, that's my kids' club. Okay, so they're at the door, as you know, with all the kids, they're too lazy to go down and get them, so we keep them at the door so they can go out and play. Uh, yeah, I suppose there's normality in the sense that these are the medals your kids win at sports days, but this is the Player of the Year trophy for 2008, so that's the oddity, but then, as I said, they're the kind of normal things. Kind of a reminder for them to see what they can match up to. Yeah, I don't, even, I don't think they even know what that is, uh, but it's a nice reminder for me. So, and then there's a few more trophies in here. You, you tend to find, like, like a lot of people, you know, you have rooms in the house that you never really use. We tend to keep a few trophies in here. There's the Barclays Classic is the big one sitting in the middle. Uh, a few other trophies around there. Uh, <laughs> the two open trophies sit there, which is, the good thing about that, it's, it's uh, I suppose the normality of it. You know, I know it's, it's special that I've won two Opens, I love that, but I come down here, I see them every day, rather than having them locked away somewhere in a, in a cabinet and you, you see them once in a blue moon, I see them all the time. So that's, that's okay. kind of nice, yep. drawn to it. What's the maddest thing that's ever been in there? The first drink that went in for me, I'm sure there were some mad things by other people, but for me was John Smith's Smooth Bitter. Okay. It was a bet with my manager. That I said, look, if I win, I'll put that in there. It was his favourite drink. It wasn't mine. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, I will say I did drink out of it, but as you're drinking out of it, you do cross. It does cross your mind what's been in it before you. <laughs> so that is a little worrying. The PGA trophies in the the background over there, the big one. It's quite big, isn't it? Yeah, that's a little bit big for the <laughs> breakfast table. All right. So, uh, if you could have just one piece of memorabilia in the house, what would it be? Open trophy first one. Okay. The, the, you can only win your first major once. That's it. So yeah, the first one absolutely is the most exciting event. Uh, I've had a lot of good good events, but as I said, the first one is very, very special. Uh, my first open was exciting. My second open, I played great. It was very satisfying. I did everything correct mm. as you would dream. And my third open, uh, I stole it. Or my third, my third major, my PGA, I just stole it. It was pretty ugly at times, but I grabbed it when I got the chance. So three different emotions for the which, three majors. Which one are you most, are you most proud of that first one? First one was very exciting. I played great, made a mess, and, and the mess always left something wanting. You don't want to mess up. That's not how you dreamed of doing it. So when I messed up the 72nd hole, yes, I won in the playoff. It gave me some redemption. But winning in 2008 at Birkdale, I won the way you would dream of winning as a kid. I was favourite, I played well, I was in the last group, I hit the big shots, I did everything that, I won by four shots, you know, I did everything, if you were sitting down as a kid, that's how you would dream, not reality now, but when you're a kid, that's how you dream of doing things. Um, as I said, the mess up on the 72nd of Carnucci left something a little bit behind. As well as I'd played for some of the PGA uh, in Oakland Hills, I got sick that week and I, I had a lot of issues. Uh, that was an unbelievable one to win. I, I genuinely, it wasn't mine to win, and I, I, I stole it at the end. It was ugly. Uh, but anybody who would tell you in sport, the ugly ones are the most fun. You know, when you go and grab something that wasn't yours yeah. and steal it, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's very special. Yeah. Yeah. This is my end of my house. Yeah, so at this end, you will... Things are nice and neat. This end, things get a little bit messed up a bit. My, I tend to lock the door. and So it's a working room. As I said, like the house is a normal house. You, you know, you, we're going to go into my gym here. Uh, shouldn't be golf stuff here, but the golf stuff has kind of crept into it. Uh, I've just come home. 
So this is why the golf bags are out, uh, gym stuff. You know, I had more in here, like a lot of gyms. When you have a lot of stuff in a gym, you end up taking stuff out, to be honest. So basically, the Smith, the Smith machine is the, it's not a Smith machine, the rack here is the most important thing, the bar, the pulleys, those two things are the things I use in the free weights the most, a bit of space to, to do my exercises, uh, no, no. all of that. Injury prevention, keeping on top of the damage I do when I'm hitting a lot of shots, and then maintaining my speed. So a lot of people, the speed drops down, but I'm managing to keep my speed up, uh, which is important. You, didn't, you just, in the modern game, you're just not going to be competitive unless you hit the ball. You can't, I can't I, especially my type of game, I cannot give up a substantial amount of distance because I'm not the guy who's going to hit all the fairways and all the greens. I'm the guy who's wanting to go for par fives and try and chip and push. So I, I do need to play with a decent amount of distance or else I, I, I struggle. Right. So uh, we're heading now down to the golf room. A little bit of storage space, as you can see. Uh, this is every golfer's dream, by the way. That many private what, ones. That actually, yeah, this is everybody's golfer's dream. Look, a full box of practice balls ready to go out there. So a couple of hundred balls, and there's a full box of... I just changed golf balls. So I've actually got two full boxes of... I've got Pro V1X sitting there, which is what I play with. And this is actually a full box of Pro V1s, which I changed it for a while. So uh, I suppose there's, there's a growth in each of those boxes. A lot of people would like that. <laughs> I'm very popular with my friends, actually. <laughs> Certainly, winter time, any time that the weather, I, I even, even when the weather's decent, I'll warm up here and go out and hit shots. But in the winter time, I'm actually spending most of my time in here. Uh, good fun stuff in here. Uh, there's always things to, to work with. I do quite a bit of training in this room. A lot of the, uh, I have a full swing, golf simulator here so I do a lot of speed work looking at how far the golf ball's going how much ball speed club head speed uh, this has been excellent in terms of giving me a picture it's much better than hitting a net uh, as I said here you'll see I have a vibration platform I have that 17 years like you know way before anybody else really got on, got ahead of these things uh, I have you got my axis in uh, uh, three you'll I chop wood during the winter for, for exercise. I find it very therapeutic. Uh, some rider cut bags, yeah. Uh, uh, they're the actual ones. They're yeah, they're the actual yeah. ones. You can see the one on the right still has a bit of the the, the dirt on it from the, the, the wet. Look, it's wet. It's the K Club. And you can see it was a wet week that week. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's in its original stage, yes. And so the new hit the opening tee shot, Val Hanna, I, I remember very clearly. Yeah. How was that experience? It's an incredibly nerve-wracking any time. The, the, the two shots for me over my career is the f I, hit, I didn't hit the opening tee shot at the Walker Cup in 91, but I teed off on the first hole playing foursomes with Paul McGinley. I couldn't see the golf ball. By the time I had to hit it, like it, it was like, I just, it's just so nervous. Now, I did hit a good one, which is a great, I suppose, great confidence booster that as nervous as I got, I still hit it down the middle. And it was the same at the, P at the Ryder Cup in... Uh, in 1990 Brookline, 1999 in Brookline. Uh, I was the second shot was my first shot of the Ryder Cup and hitting a seven iron I remember I'm like God like I just just welled up looking there. <laughs> you know it, I did hit another good shot. So thankfully in the two most pressure filled situations in my life uh, I hit good shots. So it's a good it's it's good confidence booster. But yeah it's incredibly nerve wracking. The one in the K Club there was being at home was was again like I'm standing on the tent tee and just like oh, so nervous. Uh, I'm playing, I'm playing with McGinley. I'm playing against Tiger, and if you remember, off it, sorry, I called it a tent tee. It's the first tee. We we, we we I know them as reverse, and uh, Tiger hit the five wood in the water in front of me, and like wow, did that make our tee shot a lot easier? You, you just see and he said, well, I ain't going to do any worse than that one. I'm okay. You know, yeah, I side. could hit it in the water and it would be the same. Yeah, but that's basically what we'd hit it in the woods on the right <laughs> and it looked okay. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a strange one that, all right, when you see a player in front of you do something. Because uh, I remember, you know, speaking of Tiger, he hit it out of bounds at the first hole in Carnoustie, uh, which made that tee shot far harder for the rest of the week. 
because originally you think no no nobody can hit it out but you know yeah it's a you just you you don't mind a player that you don't hold in high esteem hitting a bad shot but when there's a player like tiger that you hold up there as a, if he can do it then you it does make right, it harder for everybody else because yeah <laughs> so yeah it's, it, it is, is it you harder at home or away I, I don't. I think it's harder, depending on much more to do with your own form at the time. You can be in the Ryder Cup team and not be playing well. You could be teeing up on Sunday, having played awful all week. Could you imagine the pressure on? You're playing terrible, yet you have to go out and perform and win your match. Whereas the only time you get under pressure in a 72-hole stroke, stroke play event is the last nine holes. You just played well for 63 holes. You're feeling good. Yeah. It's a, it's a completely, the Ryder Cup is a completely different pressure filled situation because you can be asked to play the best golf of your life when you're feeling awful. That never happens at a major. At a major, you're only asked to play brilliant down the stretch after you've played the first 63 holes well and you feel good. <laughs> What I mostly do out here is wedge shots. I have a little target green up there that's a five yard circle and I hit shots all the way up here. I can hit from, it's 170 yards from the corner to the corner. Okay. So okay. I can basically hit shots about 160 yards to the green uh, all the way down to, you know, and bring it down to whatever yeah. yards I and want. I, ca I can also hit three irons. I have another bit of land over the wall here where I can hit I can hit three irons all the way up. Okay. Uh, so when I'm practicing my swing, I can hit shots. But if I'm in good stead, I'm practicing my wedge play. There's two, there's five target greens, and then I have a USGA putting and chipping green, which I spend time around. I, I have two AstroTurf greens, but I tend to use the real green, the real green. As, as the option. Does it help to have such small targets? They're yes. Yeah. I, 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 it, it, the target is very nice there. It's five yard circle. So I work on the principle, no pin can be less than three yards off the edge of the green. So I have two and a half yards either side of the pin. So if I hit that green, it means I can't miss the green on the golf course. Yeah, and the greens. Different, different, different uh, sands in the bunkers. Okay. Uh, so that's a Lynx bunker, and this is more of a of a Parkland bunker. There's a couple of other bunkers up there. Uh, green is USA spec. Uh, my greenkeeper, as you see him down there, he'll. Uh, He'll ask me what I'm coming up for, what I need, and he'll get the green up to speed. If it, you know, it's easier in the summer when we can get it firmer and faster. Uh, this is just to say that this is end of April. Yes. And it's been a very, very cold spring. Yes. And yet the greens look absolutely so. Hats off to you. To the yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that's his job. Get this, 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 <laughs> yeah. this up and running. You know, I, I don't abuse it. I don't come out during the winter and hit full shots into this green. When it firms up, I'll hit a lot more. I chip onto it, and then when it firms, firms up, I'll start hitting more and more, more shots. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really nice to have. Yeah. Uh, it, it for, I put these in for bunker shots and things like that, because it's kind of fairway, okay. but I don't bother. I use the real green. You, it's amazing when you've got a real green. It's, yep. it's, it, to see how the ball reacts is so important. And there's some nice chip shots around here. Just, it's, I try to get it as elevated as I can at the back, so I practice quite a lot there. I have a bit of hard pan over there as well. Right. Uh, different grasses around the green as well, yeah. so it, it makes yeah, a difference. Yeah, it, it, it makes it under the trees, it changes a bit, and then it's, it's a bit more fescue over this side. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a nice way of getting a bit of practice in. Kids come out here a lot? No. They have it, so they don't need to come. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, if, if if you were told you couldn't come out here, then you, then you'd want to. Uh, there is a set of divots there, which that wasn't me. So that was my uh, yeah, that was my 12-year-old son. Well, yeah, every kid's dream, I think. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I haven't got anything turned on, obviously. If we're some retro games, Space Invader and, and Pac-Man, Asteroids. Uh, Pac-Man's uh, Pac my wife's favourite, Asteroids is mine. Uh, Space Invaders, a few newer games, obviously. Uh, this is my favourite now. I've got this. My I 
I'd be a little bit more competitive at this side of things, at the snooker and pool. Okay. Uh, yeah. You probably, if you were good at snooker, you beat me, but if you're, if you're not, I'd probably have the upper edge on you. Does that make any okay. sense? You know, if you're, if, you're, if you're going to knock in, if you're knocking in 50 plus breaks, you'll beat me. But I'm okay if you're just an average okay. Joe. So, well, it's, again, it's a very much a golfing thing, isn't it? What's your biggest break? Uh, my biggest break is 67. So I'm not like it. Best player the, uh, in the golf, Faxon and Azinger were the best at foosball. Can we have a quick one ball? Uh, I'm useless, come on. I am useless at this. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, see, I let go already. Just one only. <laughs> you, you do realise if you scored. No, <laughs> that's two out of three. <laughs> well, Patrick, thank you very much for sending us down. You're welcome. Appreciate Absolutely. It.